Hi folks, Steve from Martel Training Group. I have breaking news from the state of New Jersey regarding magazine capacity limits and the assault weapon ban. These are two issues in New Jersey plaguing uh, responsible gun owners for quite some time now. There have been previous lawsuits filed and there's been an update on motions recently filed within the last week regarding these two cases specifically. Let's get into it. For quite some time, New Jersey has banned certain weapons it defines as assault weapons. And there's a list in 2C of certain known uh, firearms that New Jersey deems are illegal. And any firearm that uh, resembles any of the listed firearms is also uh, deemed illegal as well. There have been lawsuits that have been filed on this and also the magazine restrictions. So currently, if you're a permit to carry a handgun holder in New Jersey, you are limited to 10 round magazines. Actually, everyone in the state of New Jersey is limited to 10 rounds unless you are number one, active duty law enforcement or you are retired law enforcement, number one, carrying under the RPO, retired police officer permit to carry, in that case, you are limited to 15 rounds under the RPO as long as your gun is quote unquote registered with the New Jersey State Police. If you are carrying under Leosa, you are limited to 10 rounds magazine. Everyone else is limited to 10 rounds, meaning you can't have more than 10 round magazines even with your guns at home for self-defense. So there have been lawsuits that have been filed, one specifically by the Association of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Clubs, filed a lawsuit, I believe it was 2018, on the weapon ban, the assault weapon ban, and also the magazine restriction. And there's been new developments in these lawsuits because of motions that were filed, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So folks, if you go to the Association of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Clubs website, uh, there's an explanation in greater detail on their website. You can register and get alerts from them. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested, but they've been very good about keeping everyone up to date in New Jersey on these court cases. And on October 10th, two days ago, they filed, the Association for New Jer of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Clubs filed motions in the combined magazine ban and assault weapon firearm ban cases. So they filed these motions in the lower courts to exclude the testimony of these witnesses and also for summary judgment of the two lawsuits that were filed. So we're going to get into that in a little bit more detail. So the summary judgment, if granted, would have an effect of ending these cases, specifically the magazine ban case and the uh, assault weapon ban case in favor of gun owners in New Jersey. So the Association of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Club goes on to say that their magazine ban lawsuit, which was filed, I believe, in 2018, was given new life in 2022 after the Bruin decision. If any of you are not familiar with the Bruin decision, see the link in the description. I'll put a link to my video on the Bruin decision. Very important U.S. Supreme Court case out in New York, the state of New York, which paved the way for responsible gun owners in New York and New Jersey to more easily acquire a, a carry permits in both those states. And there have been a bunch of restrictive gun laws that have been either overturned or challenged because of the Bruin decision. So very important case for responsible gun owners. So the U.S. Supreme Court returned this case from the Association for New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Clubs to the lower federal court for reconsideration in light of the Bruin decision. A lot of things came out of the Bruin decision. Positive things for responsible gun owners. So since that occurred, the case has been tied up with procedural court ordered discovery and it also became further complicated when it was consolidated with the separate lawsuit involving the assault weapon ban in New Jersey. Discovery was recently completed and the Association of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Clubs has filed this new motion to exclude the state's expert testimony and end the case. So, of course, we can all expect that no matter what the decision is in favor of gun owners or not, there's going to be an appeal, most certainly, to the middle-level federal appeals court. So, I'll put links to these motions in the description as well if you want to check them out. I should note that the timing of these motions is actually 
perfect since the Southern Federal District Court Judge Benitez just struck down California's magazine restriction law. Judge Benitez based his decision for overturning California's ban on the Bruin decision, the U.S. Supreme Court Bruin decision, in addition to other factors as well. So California will appeal this to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. So the Ninth Circuit can be considered sort of a catch-22 because if they side with California, the case will get appealed to the Supreme Court, where it will likely be overturned, of course, due to Bruin. Or the Ninth Circuit can affirm the ruling of Judge Benitez. So either way, it, it should be a win for responsible gun owners. So next, I'd like to touch on just a, a brief summary of the motion that was filed. So if you read the argument, they're going to go into a little bit greater detail, but I'll just summarize this to the best of my abilities here. So the Association of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Clubs has made it clear that there are so basically four main points here that they argue in this brief or this motion that was filed. Uh, number one is they say the firearms and magazines that New Jersey has banned are considered arms. And that's important. Uh, in a minute, I'll explain why. Number two, the arms New Jersey has banned are typically possessed by law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes, including self-defense. Number three, there is no historical tradition in this country of banning the kinds of arms that New Jersey has banned. And finally, number four, the magazine ban is an unconstitutional taking. And I'll explain a little bit about what that means. So in the Bruin decision, the U.S. Supreme Court made it clear that while the Second Amendment protects the keeping and bearing of all weapons that are, quoting, common use, so they argue that New Jersey's ban on these arms, including the magazines, they're part of arms, are typically possessed by law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes. So New Jersey cannot deny that the arms it has banned are common use, what's called common use. And of course, they put in there that common use is a misnomer because the court made it clear that it is the possession for lawful purposes regardless of how often it is used, if ever it's used. So that doesn't mean that it's commonly used. It just means that it's possessed for lawful purposes. And the, in their argument, the Association of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Clubs is saying that these are common use items that are used by lawful gun owners for lawful purposes and New Jersey can't just ban them like they have. So the first thing they talk about is the firearms and magazines that New Jersey has banned are considered arms. And in Bruin, the U.S. Supreme Court did make it clear that when the Second Amendment's plain text covers an individual's conduct, the Constitution presumptively protects that conduct. So the question that the court must ask is whether the Second Amendment's plain text covers the conduct. Specifically, in this case, the challenge law restricts the 10-round magazine limit in New Jersey. So the answer would be the Second Amendment guarantees the right to, of the people to keep and bear arms. And Bruin squarely held, we all know, the Second Amendment extends prima facie to all instruments that constitute bearable arms, even those that were not in existence at the time of the founding. So if the state of New Jersey wants to argue that the semi-automatic handguns weren't around in the 18th century, for example, they can't do that. So as far as the assault weapon ban, they argue that New Jersey has prohibited the people whose rights the Second Amendment protects from keeping and bearing wide swath of rifles, pistols, and shotguns. Rifles, pistols, and shotguns plainly constitute bearable arms. No matter what kind of grip, stock, ammunition feeding device, or other features that they may have. The right to keep and bear the firearms New Jersey has banned is thus presumptively protected by the Constitution. And of course, this is no less true of the ammunition feeding devices New Jersey has banned. The Third Circuit has already recognized that because ammunition magazines feed ammunition into certain guns, and ammunition is necessary for a, such a gun to function, as intended, magazines are considered arms within the meaning of the Second Amendment. So, obviously, you need the magazine for the gun to work. It's part of the arms. It's considered arms according to the Second Amendment. 
And they continue saying, and rightly so, it is not just the firearms alone, but with the ammunition fed by the magazine that facilitates armed self-defense. Feeding devices are not just holders of ammunition, they are an integral part of the mechanism that makes the semi-automatic firearms work. The second point, the arms New Jersey has banned are typically possessed by law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes, including self-defense. They go on to say in their argument that because the firearms and feeding devices New Jersey banned easily fit within the Second Amendment's definition of arms, the state bears the burden of proving that they nonetheless can be banned consistent with the nation's historical tradition of firearm regulation. That's in the Bruin decision, right? The Bruin decision made it clear that the state has to prove that this is part of the nation's historical tradition if you want to make it part of law or regulation. The state cannot meet this burden. That's what the uh, Association of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Clubs has argued in this motion, that the state cannot meet this burden, and I agree with them. The Supreme Court has already decided what arms may be banned, consistent with historical tradition. If they're in common use, you can't ban them. If they're not in common use, they can be banned. And they also quote other, other cases like the Heller case, in which they say that basically the government may not prohibit an entire class of arms that is overwhelmingly chosen by American society for lawful purposes. If they are quoting common use, such as magazines, they are entitled to Second Amendment protection. Further, they go on to say that New Jersey bans many AR platform rifles by name and or feature, but the Supreme Court itself has described the AR-15 rifle as a quote, widely accepted as lawful possessions. Millions of Americans collectively own more than 24 million of these rifles. And of course, they go on to say that New Jersey's ban as a, quote, feature-based ban with such things as the pistol braces and the stabilizing braces make no sense. And if they are allowed to do that, then they can basically ban any gun or rifle or pistol that they think is dangerous by their own definition. Number three, there is no historical tradition in this country of banning the kinds of arms that New Jersey has banned. So on this point, they go on to say that New Jersey can't even come close to meeting its burden of demonstrating any historical tradition of prohibiting firearms capable of firing more than 10 rounds without reloading. The very fact that millions of Americans have chosen these arms in the tens of hundreds of millions confirms that there is not and never has been any tradition of banning them. Very good point. And finally, the last thing uh, they say that they argue that the magazine ban is an unconstitutional taking. So the taking clause of the Fifth Amendment as incorporated against the states by the 14th Amendment provides that, quote, private property shall not be taken for public use without just compensation. So in that clause or amendment, you see that they say that if the state seizes or takes uh, an item, it has to compensate. So what they're arguing here, as they're saying that there are two types of uh, taking, there's physically taking it, and there's also regulatory taking by taking it by through regulation. So they're arguing that the state is not compensating us by saying you can't have these and in some cases, you have to either turn them in or destroy them. So that's a form of taking, they're arguing, and it's unconstitutional. They're saying that in summary, the court should grant a summary judgment declaring that the challenge bans unconstitutional and permanently enjoining or prohibiting their enforcement. So the next step, folks, is the state of New Jersey has till November 3rd to file their response which is gonna likely include motions of their own. And then we'll see what happens from there. But I think this is good news, folks, with these uh, with the Bruin decision that these uh, lawsuits from the Association of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Clubs, the Bruin decision has given them a new life. And with this motion filed, I think there's a very good chance that we're gonna see that magazine ban overturned and the assault weapon ban uh, overturned as well. So thank you to the Association of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Clubs for continuing this fight.
for responsible New Jersey gun owners. I think this is very important. And this, again, this lawsuit, the, the two lawsuits, the assault weapon ban and the magazine restriction or magazine uh, high, what the state defines as a high capacity magazine. Uh, these lawsuits are continuing. They're now consolidated and they're continuing thanks to the uh, Association of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Club. So thank you uh, to that organization. And we will uh, try to keep everybody up to date as things unfold. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you know when we release new videos. Thanks for watching. Take care and stay safe.